Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome to this week's tutorial on the Slate Material Editor in 3ds Max. Now, I've already went ahead and set up some basic lights and a camera setup, and this project file will be available for download in a link in the description below if you want to follow along. Now, for those of you who are not new to 3ds Max, you might remember the old Material Editor. If I go up here to the Material Editor, click hold down my mouse button, and go down to the first option and release, this brings up the old Material Editor. Now this material editor was sample based, meaning each of these squares was its own different material and if you click on it, it would bring up the material settings. Now this was great for smaller scenes or scenes with very few materials, but the second you started having a lot of materials and materials using other materials to blend between them, this got very messy, very unorganized, and very hard to manage. So if I exit out of this, go back up to the material editor, click and hold, and go down to the second option and release, you can see it brings up our new material editor. I'm going to make this full screen. Now like I've said, I've already gone ahead and set up the basic scene and changed the renderer to mental ray. If you want to know how to do that, you can watch my 3ds Max Basics 2016 tutorial and that'll teach you how to set up some basic lights and change the renderer to mental ray. Now let's get started by dragging an arch and design material into the middle of our workspace. And just like the orthographic views, I can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and the middle mouse button to pan. Now this node right here is our material. So if I double click on this, you can see it brings up our material properties on the right hand side of the screen. And I can do things like, for example, change the color to red. Let's change that to red. Hit OK. And I'm going to go down and change the BRDF settings to by IOR. And if we double click on this little square up here, that enlarges the preview so we can see our material better. Now on the left hand side of the node, you see all these little circles. Each one of these circles is its own input. So we can use maps to control the inputs of the material. So we can use an image map to control the reflection or the diffuse color, things like that. In order to see what I mean, we're going to go up to search by name box and we are going to search for checker and drag out a checker map. And we're going to take the output of the checker map into the input of the diffuse color map. And as you can see, it has applied the checker texture to diffuse color of the arch and design material. So if we double click our checker map, it opens up the map settings. I'm going to set the tiling to five by five. And I'm going to set the black color to a dark red, just like that. And now we have our first material we have designed with the Slate Material Editor. But a material is useless unless we apply it to our object. So I'm going to minimize the window. And now there are two ways to apply a material to our object. The first way is by selecting our material node and selecting our object and clicking Assign Material to Selection. And that works great. However, we can also take Material Output Noodle and drag that onto our object and that'll also apply our material to our object. And if we render this, you can see we have applied our red checker material to our teapot object. Now I'm going to exit out of that and we are going to create a second material. So I'm going to maximize that window, drag out a second arch and design material, Open up those properties, change the diffuse color to green. And then I'm going to do something cool. We can use one map to control the input of multiple different materials. Now in order to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the checker node back so we have a little bit more room. And then I'm going to search for a color correction node. And drag that in the center, just like that. And then I'm going to drag the output of the checker map into the input map of the color correction and then the output of the color correction into the diffuse map of our second material. Now if I double click on the color correction map and shift the hue color to about plus 100 so it turns red into green and then double click on the sample slot you can see it's taking the single checker map shifting the color into green and then using that as the diffuse color map for our second material. This is helpful because what we can do is we can double click on our checker map and edit those original settings. 
For example, I can change the tiling to 20 by 20. And as you can see, it changes both maps on both materials simultaneously. So now I'm going to minimize this window, drag the output noodle from our second material onto our cube, and then I'm going to render again. And now you can see we have used one input map to control two completely separate materials. Another cool thing you can do with the slate material editor, if I exit out of this, make this full screen again. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag up the arch and design material, the red checker map, just to make some room. And then I'm going to drag out the uh, standard material right underneath that. And double click to open up the standard material properties. Now I'm going to set the self-illumination to 100. And let's see, we've already used red and green, so I'm going to set the ambient color to blue. A light blue, just like that. And next, I'm going to search for a blend node and drag that out. Now, by default, a blend node comes connected to two standard materials. You can just drag, highlight both of those and hit delete. We won't need those. And I'm going to drag the red texture map to material 1 slot and drag the blue standard material to material 2. And now if I double click on this blend material and double click on the preview, what this mix amount over here in the material properties does is the amount that it mixes between the two individual materials. 0 being 100% material 1, 100 being 100% material 2, and 50 being a 50-50 mix between the two. But we're not going to use that. What we're going to use is a mask. So if I go and search for fall off and drag out a fall off node, what I can do is I can connect the output of the fall off node into the input of the mask node. And you can see it creates this very cool sort of edge highlight glow to our material. So if I minimize this window and drag that new material we made onto our teapot object, and render, you can see we now have this very cool glowing effect to our material because it is now a brand new material that is a mix between the previous two. I'm not going to let this finish, there's no reason to let this finish, so I'm going to hit cancel and exit out of this. Now there's one last thing I want to show you that is very, actually kind of boring, but it's very helpful. So even though this is a lot easier to work with than the old material editor, and a lot easier to visualize what's actually going on, inevitably once you get into more complex scenes, this window is going to get very cluttered with nodes and noodles. So we have to have a way to organize this and clean it up. And by far the best way to organize this is by hitting Control A and hitting Delete. Now some of you might have just thought I have deleted everything we have worked on in this tutorial, however you will be wrong. All I have done is deleted the nodes from the workspace. They still exist in our scene and the materials still exist applied to those objects. And to get them back, all I have to do is pick this little eyedropper, pick material from object, and then click on the object we want to get the material for, and it opens up all those nodes from that object. Same thing with our green material. If I go over here and I drop our cube, it brings back all the nodes for that material and they're even still connected just like they were before. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you learned something, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you have an idea for future tutorials, leave a comment down below and I will see you next time.